Hi guys and welcome back to Car Focused. What a glorious summer's day it is here in England. It's high 20s, beautiful weather, nice and dry, nice and warm. It's the perfect opportunity to be reviewing something like this. Yeah, there's no kind of prizes for guessing what this is. It's obviously a Caterham. Now, I have reviewed a Caterham on the channel before. A couple of years ago, that was the 310R. Great fun, uh, that had about 100 and, I think it's about 180 horsepower if my memory serves me right. I said myself it was a perfect blend of kind of power and fun for the public roads. But today, we've got something a bit more spicy. Now this is the 420R. So rather than a 1.6 engine, we've got a two litre Duratec here. And this two litre Duratec produces 210 brake horsepower. Now this car weighs just over 500 kilos, so it's roughly around 420 brake horsepower per tonne, hence the 420 badge. Now, I can assure you, this thing is bloody fast. It will do 0 to 60 in 3.8 seconds, it will top out just under 135 miles an hour, which in a car this small is insane. More than fast enough for the public road, and I can only imagine that on the track, it is an absolute weapon. But I've been driving it for a couple of days now. I've done quite a lot of miles in it. I've done, must be about 250 miles. I've done M25, I've done country roads, A roads, B roads, I've done the lot. I even drove in a bit of rain as well. So I've got a bit of experience with the car now. And I will say that compared to any hot hatch, this thing is another level. I used to look at these cars and I used to kind of think, yeah, they're all right, but it's, I'm not really interested. It's nothing really special until I drove one. Seriously guys, if you get the chance to drive one of these, particularly in this trim, 420, you know, 360, 420, do it. Because this is the purest, most raw driving experience you're probably gonna get on a public road. It's a go-kart. It's basically a go-kart for the public road. You sit about three inches off the floor. You're in a tiny little cabin, tiny little steering wheel. You've got a lovely little short throw, small pedal box, loads of power, loads of torque, and it handles brilliantly as well. We've got semi-slick Avon tires. They're just an absolute blast. And if you drive one of these for a day and get in your hot hatch, no matter what hot hatch it is, the hot hatch, unfortunately, is gonna feel terrible for the first hour or so because you're so used to just how pure and raw this car actually is. Anyway, enough kind of ranting and raving about how good it is. Um, yeah, so this one, it's a 420R, they're lovely blue. They obviously come in kit form if you want to build them yourself or you can have them built at Caterham. Uh, this model here in the S-Pack trim, it starts at about 35,000, then you can add on the R-Pack and other optional extras, carbon bits here and there, and you kind of pushing up towards 40. But I personally would go for the R-Pack, you get your race suspension, your limited slip differential, which is quite important. A few nice trim features as well, you get a nice key, you get a nice handbrake lever and you get some carbon bucket seats as well, carbon shell seats, four point harness, just a really sporting feel. Uprated master cylinder as well, the, the brake, the braking system. This car also has a dry sump, dry sump system as well. And yeah, it's, it's a well kitted out little car. We've got a roll cage on this one as well. So if you do get in some serious problems end up on the roof, your head's gonna be safe from uh, impacting the floor. So yeah, nice little roll cage there. It's got a roof in the back. If it does rain and you need to stick your roof on, it's quite a fiddly process, but it does, there's poppers which it attaches to. So yeah, it's got the bare essentials. We've got some flimsy little doors as well. But um, in terms of creature comforts, we've got a steering wheel, we've got a gear stick, we've got pedals, we've got lights, and we've got an instrument cluster. That is pretty much it. There's, there's not even an interior light in this thing. I've been driving this thing at night and uh, yeah, it's good fun. Anyway, so enough, to, blabbling on about this car i think we need to get inside and do the most important bit of the video and that is the drive i can't wait for this bit so before we actually go for a drive i'm just going to demonstrate how you get in this thing now bear in mind the roof is off because when the roof is on it's a lot more difficult so swing the door open you need to make sure that your seat belts are clear of the seat so you need to loosen them up as you can just see my backside at the moment i apologize get them out of the way and what you want to do now is, like a go-kart, one hand on the, um, on the roll bar, both feet on the seat, support yourself here, and slide yourself in. And then you close your little flimsy door, fire her up, and off you go.
Don't forget to put your seatbelt on. So guys, now firstly, I apologize if you can't hear what I'm saying because it's very, very loud inside this cabin. So we'll see how we get on. But the exhaust is literally right next to me and you can hear the transmission whirring you can hear the wind coming through the little gaps in the little doors and stuff you can hear the road through the tires it's just yeah there's a lot of noise but that's all part of this experience of this really mega little machine anyway so we're sat in the car what's it like to be sat in this thing so as i said before you're sat really low it feels like you're literally sat on the floor you get something like a ford fiesta overtaking you and that feels like a big car it's up here so you've got to keep your wits about you you've got to be careful particularly when it's summertime like it is now and you've got a lot of grass on the verges and stuff because it's hard for cars to spot you coming around the corner because you're kind of hidden below the verge so yeah, very low you're sat nice and snug in this little carbon bucket seat you feel like you're in a race car your legs are funneled down into a really small little pedal box so obviously you've got your clutch your brake and your accelerator they're quite close together so you've got to be pretty and um, pretty precise with your your throttle and your braking and your gear change something you'll get used to but you've got to wear kind of slim trainers just so you've got maximum movement down there in that little pedal box very basic little setup on the dashboard. We've, as I already touched upon before, we've just got basically indicators, wipers, just your, your lights and the stuff that you need. Tiny little toggle switches there for your lights and your wipers as well, and your indicators. We've got a nice, very small little Momo steering wheel. It feels like you're driving a little, a little PlayStation racing simulator at home. Lovely little gear knob with the R logo on it. It's a five speed, really short little throw, very mechanical. You've got to make sure you get your gear changes spot on because it is quite easy to knock it into the wrong gear. Then, before we get, you know, properly driving, you've got your transmission tunnel here and that brings me on to a couple of the things that I'm not too keen on with the car. So, you have to basically keep your arm to the right-hand side of this transmission tunnel. If you have it over the left-hand side, you then can't turn the steering wheel properly. So, you've got to kind of train yourself to change gear in quite a tight space. It's not an issue when you've driven the car for a couple of days, but I found that quite weird at first. You don't have much room to use the gear stick. So, yeah. Visibility through this little windscreen is absolutely fine. It's a little bit hard trying to sort of pick out from behind it when you're reversing, trying to look where you're going, but you can see your blind spots fine. And yeah, you're at one. You're at one with nature in this car. We're open to the elements. You can feel the breeze coming in. It's just lovely. Anyway, the good stuff. So, you can drive this car quite sensibly if you want to. It will happily prod along at slow speeds and it won't really complain. You've got loads of torque as well. So, for example, now we're at 40 and fourth gear. Put your foot down and it will start to increase speed nicely. It does become a little bit jerky at slow speeds and the accelerator is very sensitive so if you find yourself on a bumpy road your foot is going to move with those bumps and it will be a little bit on and off with the accelerator but where this car is most comfortable as you'd expect that is at the top of the rev range going at slightly higher speeds now this will redline at over 8,000 revs so you can go into gear in second and third now you can feel the power band coming in a bit further on up the rev range and it is relentless up to the red line we've got this nice little shift light telling you when to change gear and the handling of this thing exaggerating guys this thing is another level Very light, 
and it will find any imperfection on the road. So if there's a bit of a bump, you've got to be careful. The car doesn't actually take off because when it, it will take off, the back wheels will take off slightly and you will lose traction. The wheels will spin up as you leave the ground and when they hit the ground again, you will find yourself losing traction. So you've just got to be careful. You've just got to just think ahead what you're doing use the throttle wisely but when, you know when you see a nice open bit of road you can just nail it and you can let the car take off but it is so much fun to experience it because as I say it's just an absolute another level of motoring and to think you can have these on a public road is astonishing ah, I don't want to give this car back this car I think if you have a hot hatch which you're keeping tucked away for those summer months to go out and hit a back road and have fun I think replacing it with one of these if you can afford it is the way to go because this gives you 10 times more fun than any hot hatch and it's specifically made for that purpose a hot hatch is made to do all sorts of stuff you know and have a bit of fun at the same time and if you're using your hot hatch just to have fun you're kind of missing out. Something like this is 100% made for hitting a track or a back road and for making you smile and this just does it brilliantly. So if you can stretch to a caterham as a toy, a weekend car, do it guys, do it. Because it's absolutely brilliant. And like I say, if you get the chance to drive one of these, do it. Because I guarantee your opinion of the car will change. Anyway guys, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Oh. Yeah, I hope you've enjoyed the video guys, as always. Uh, feel free to comment, like and subscribe if you haven't already done so. And until the next one, take care and I shall see you soon.